This video may contain offensive language or be frightening to some viewers. Viewer discretion is recommended. Laughing Jill. Let me tell you a story. Not a bedtime story, but a genuine story. This is the story of Laughing Jill and Mary. And every word is true. Mary was a lonely girl. That was an understatement for a city child. Even the rich children had lots of friends. Maybe it was because her dad was an entrepreneur and designed most of the industry for 19th century Glasgow, Scotland. Her dad was crazy. Another understatement. Mary was a quiet girl. At the school she went to, she was a high achiever due to her parents' high expectations of her. She was made to study as much as possible. One Christmas, she was showered with expensive presents, as usual. But she didn't want another pony to add to her five already or another expensive dress. She wanted something simple, like a jack-in-the-box. No, not Jack. Jill. Or maybe better yet, a friend. She walked upstairs after thanking the servants with a fake smile and entered her room. It was another way her parents thought they could buy her happiness. A large four-poster bed with velvet curtains, giant fluffy pillows, a walk-in wardrobe, and a fluffy tiger fur rug. Mary knew that there was something odd as soon as she walked in. Then she suddenly saw a small box on her bed. It was painted in bright colours on each side, with a crank on the pink side. There was a carved note on one of the sides. Merry Christmas, Mary. Have a laughing Jill in the box. That was weird. Mary thought that there were only jack-in-the-boxes, never mind laughing ones. But for curiosity's sake, she sat down cross-legged on her bed and started turning the handle of the crank. As Pop Goes the Weasel plays, but it sounds like a voice is getting louder as she turns it. Round and round the berry plant, the monkey chased the weasel, the monkey caught up, and the game was done. Pop! A loud popping sounds, as when the thing was supposed to sound, there was just a cloud of dust. Mary thought it was just a prank, until she saw her. It was a girl who looked to be in her mid-teens. She had long brown hair that fell to her waist. She wore a long dress to her ankles that puffed out naturally. She was so colourful and had panels of every colour over her, except her white ruffle at her chest. Ah, it's good to get out of here, she says in a soft voice before looking around to face Mary and starts giggling. <laughs> Sorry, sweetie. I'm laughing Jill, your new best friend. She smiles sweetly, looking at Mary with large green eyes, as Mary saw her pointed nose with a colourful cone at the end of it. Um, hi, Jill, I'm Mary, Mary stuttered shyly. I know that. I know everything about you. I am designed to be your friend. I like what you like, hate what you hate, and love what you love. 
Jill smiles, climbing onto the covering sheets of the bed and laying down, giggling. Okay, how is this possible? Mary asked, curious. Jill stops giggling and hangs her head over the side. Never, ever question good things, because they always make you feel bad, Jill says before grabbing onto the frame and rolling off so she was hanging onto the frame before she landed softly on the floor, as if she weighed nothing. Why? Mary asked before having a piece of hard candy thrown at her gently. What did I just say? Jill asks, putting a piece of candy in her mouth, smiling. Don't question it, Mary says shyly. Exactly. Mary, get dressed and we can play some games, Jill says, jumping onto the bed and swinging her legs up to show a pair of knee-high boots. That's unladylike, Jill, Mary says, walking over to her closet. Where I come from, we can do whatever we want, Jill says, as Mary gets changed. We can eat how much candy we want, and we can even ride any animal we want. Jill stands up and stretches, before asking, do you want to play in the snow? My mum and dad say it's dangerous, Mary says shyly. It's the most awesome thing to do. Wrap up in warm clothes and meet me downstairs, Jill giggles before disappearing. Mary put on her warmest clothes and went downstairs before walking out to the garden where Jill was waiting with a clump of snow in her hand. Thud! The snowball hit the wall next to Mary, giving her a fright due to the moving snowball that just missed her. Come on Mary, have some fun, Jill says laughing while scooping up more snow and throwing it at a servant hitting him in the face. But it's not right, Jill. Mary complains, walking towards Jill. What? Having fun? Jill says confused. I don't like it, Mary complains. You don't like it, Mary. That's why I'm doing it. You secretly want to join me, but you're afraid of getting in trouble. Jill says, tossing a snowball between her hands. I don't, Mary says again. Then why is there a snowball in your hand? Jill asks, looking at Mary to see that a snowball has appeared in her hand. Give it your best shot, Jill taunts, dancing away through the statues in the garden. Mary throws it hitting a servant straight in the face, as Jill hides behind them. Miss, that is outrageous, the servant says, scowling at Mary. But laughing Jill dared me to do it, Mary complains. Who is laughing Jill? the servant asks, moving his hair out of his face. She's my friend. Look behind you. Mary starts sounding like she was about to cry. The servant turns around, and Jill touches his jaw, making him shiver. There is no one there. He is looking around, but he can't see Jill. Miss, you are going back to your room. Mary was taken back to her room by the servant. Jill sneaks up behind him as he walks in after Mary and puts a snowball down his shirt, making him squirm as Jill starts laughing and Mary giggles at this as the servant gets even more mad. 
This went on for years. Jill and Mary would play every day, having fun and getting into trouble. Mary enjoyed having fun, playing games and pranks with her newly found friend. Her parents thought she was just joking around with her imaginary friend until she passed the age of 12. Mary was supposed to be a mature teen now, but she still blamed everything on Jill, who was always hiding behind the person who gave Mary into trouble. Until one day... Mary! Mary's dad, Henry, shouts from his study. Yes, dad? Mary says, walking in, dragging her feet, and Jill follows, invisible to everyone except Mary. You need to stop this. Jill isn't real. She never has been, Henry says, looking down at Mary, who has turned into a rebellious kid who doesn't wear many big dresses anymore, instead opting to dress like the kids on the street much to his disapproval. She is real, Mary mutters under her breath. Stop saying that, Mary. Both me and your mother are worried. Henry is close to shouting as he brushes down his fancy business suit. Then where is mother? If she cared, she wouldn't be drunk now, would she? Mary says, getting mad, as Jill sits on the desk, giggling. Jill hasn't aged at all, and she still looks like the way she did when she first met Mary. The only difference was now she always wore an evil grin on her face, as well as her colours had faded a bit lately. But it wasn't too noticeable. Don't say that about your own mother. Henry is now obviously mad. I can say what I want. It's not like she cares about me anyway, Mary shouts, before getting slapped across the face. Jill kicks Henry square in the back, knocking him to the ground with a thud. I will not try my own daughter as a witch, but you are going away to a place where they will teach you that Jill does not exist. Henry shouts, struggling to get up, as Jill sits on his back, scratching things into his suit. Make me, Mary says, as two nuns walk through the doors, with their heads bowed. That's exactly what these ladies are hired to do, Henry says, as Jill then punches his back, stunning him, and he gasps for breath. Jill! Mary shouts, as the women drag her out of the room, as Mary struggles. Mary! Jill shouts, and everyone heard that. I will be looking for you, Jill says silently, as Mary is taken away from her. Jill was losing her colour. Every day she slowly lost her colour due to Mary's unhappiness. She couldn't see Mary, but it was Mary's mind that was doing this. Jill tried to leave, but she couldn't. Her box was at the home, so she couldn't leave for longer than an hour a week because of this. Jill was going crazy. Servants were finding flipped tables, broken furniture, and they found dress scraps near each of these. As Jill's mind was going crazy, her dress was remaking itself, panel by panel, strip by strip. Mary's mum stopped drinking a week after Mary left, and started crying about how wrong they were, and Jill joined her at these. Jill didn't cry, she never cries, but she did miss Mary so much. Mary wasn't doing any better. The nuns were drilling into her head that Jill was a demon, and that she was evil. 
Mary was pretending to respond to the treatment, when truthfully, she hated every single one of them and wished that they would die. She had her own room, but she ended up carving things into the walls and door, such as, If there truly is a god, he will beg for my forgiveness. After a year of this, Mary was finally allowed to see her family again at her house. But Mary wasn't happy to see her family, except for Jill. Mary was escorted into her house, where her family was awaiting her arrival. They were there with the servants and everyone, except for Jill. I see you finally gave up believing in her, Mary, her dad says happily. He continued praising her until he saw a figure walk into the room, giggling. Everyone else heard it also, and turned around to see the source. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. Jill giggles as everyone turns to look at Jill for the first time ever. Jill was taller now. She had long hair that fell in uneven strands, and her cone nose was now black and white. The scary thing was her dress. It went from being full of colours to being black and white. Her dress was shredded at the bottom, and her eyes were now black, and it was terrifying. Jill, what happened? Mary asks after a minute of silence, and then the room was filled with laughter. <laughs> you really want to know? Jill walks forward to behind Mary's dad. When this fool got rid of you, it drove me insane. Jill was right next to his ear. Like I will do to all these people. I couldn't stand being alone. Remember what you were like before you met me? That's what I was like. Lonely. Depressed. So sad I couldn't eat candy. Jill flicks her arm and Candy slides out from her sleeve. Mary, just say the word and we can be together forever, with none of these idiots to keep us apart. Jill, I can- Bang! Mary fell to the floor as Jill feels something pass through her body. Jill turns around to see Mary's mother standing there with a gun in her hands. Mary's death made her snap. In another room, the jack-in-the-box from all those years ago broke into a million pieces. Mary's mother was standing there, looking at Jill in front of her. You're a monster, she says, her brown hair hiding her face. Why won't you die? To kill me? You killed Mary? Your daughter? Your only child? Jill starts laughing. Watch your back, you old hag, Jill says as she runs past Mary's mum, sticking out her now claw-like hand towards her and slices through her dress, scratching her stomach, laughing. Sleep with one eye open, honey, Jill laughs as she disappears into thin air. Later that day, Mary's mother was walking through the house. She entered the living room to see a horrifying sight. It was the two nuns hanging from the chandelier by two ends of the one rope. They had their stomachs sliced open with an untidy slash that was dripping fresh blood onto the floor. On the wall, written in fresh blood, was 
I warn to you, sweetie. What's that behind you? Mary's mother was afraid, but she turned around slowly to see a black and white face staring at her. Jill was holding her husband's most recent invention. It was a saw designed to cut down trees without needing more than one person. It was also covered in blood. A high-pitched scream echoes through the house as Jill lifts up the chainsaw and plunges it into Mary's mother's stomach, making her cough up blood and fall to her knees. I warned you, honey. Jill laughs, pulling the chainsaw out of her stomach. When Henry walked in, he was greeted by the sight of Mary's mum, hanging from the light fitting as well. The writing had changed. I warned her. She didn't listen. I warned you, and here you are. So, what's behind you? Henry turns around to hear the door open and soft singing. Mary, Mary, dead just maybe, how does your tombstone show? With moss that swells and snow that fills the holes. Jill walks in slowly swinging the saw in one hand, giggling. What do you want, demon? Henry asks, holding a gun at Jill. Isn't it obvious? Revenge. You killed my friend, my only friend, your own damn daughter. Jill shouts, revving the saw. An eye for an eye. A life for a life. Jill shoves the saw through his stomach, laughing. You witch! Henry hisses. <laughs> Nothing new here, Jill laughs, pulling the saw up, slicing through his ribs. To this day, Jill is still out there. Her story may have been replaced with another, but she is still there. But one question. What's that behind you? Of course it was me, my splendid creature. Mr. Bunny even showed it to you. He smiled with self-evident truth. I made for you many toys, and I can't wait to introduce you to Miranda. But you can call her Mandy, if you like. Suddenly something hit his head, and it shattered into pieces. My father had a wooden club.